Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, been following along on the channel, thanks. Uh, we're winding down here, dealt with the fuselage, and uh, someone had requested a video of some of the tools that I use, so here to give you a little bit of that and maybe some little extras. Um, Bands does have a minimum equipment list that you need to build the RV-12. Um, so I based my initial purchase off of that, although I started with the RV. I was planning on starting with the RV-14, so I bought probably a lot more than what you would need for the 12, uh, which was good because then I had a lot of extra tools that um, I've actually found handy throughout the process that you don't necessarily need for the 12, but may work for you. So here's a little bit of an overview of that. Um, I'm just going to kind of start on this end of the table and work my way that way. Um, so the first tool that I have here is going to be the pneumatic yoke. You will need an air compressor to use this. Um, and I also purchased the extra uh, yokes to go with this. This one is the four inch uh, long reach yoke. I think there's even a longer one, maybe a five inch, but uh, the four inch is, I've only used this a couple of times on the 12 and um, found it sufficient. You may or may not need it um, to get by uh, with building 12. The other one it comes with is a standard three inch yoke. Um, I don't really use this one that much. Uh, I'm typically using the flange yoke, which has this flange, um, so you can reach over flanges on parts. Very simple tool to use. It's, it's quite heavy, so it has a bit of mass to it. Um, but basically the way it works is, you know, you connect it to your airline, the 90 PSI on this, uh, and no oil. This tool does not use any oil. It's, if you put any air tool oil on it, you will destroy this tool. It uses some sort of leather, um, a system on the inside that oil will destroy so never oil this tool but uh, real simple to use you just this is kind of a safety switch on here your your detent lever you have to kind of push it up and then slide it over and that will um, use the cam action to uh, to pressure rivets um, as you see behind me I have a Harbor Freight uh, central pneumatic 21 gallon air compressor I found that more than sufficient um, actually for this tool and um, the other air tools, with the exception of the drill, you do not need much, uh, much capacity for air. Um, so if you're, using, if you're gonna use a pneumatic drill, and I'll get to that in a little bit, you may need a larger, uh, you may need a size similar to this one. Uh, but other than that, you can get by. I had a small pancake compressor that I was using for the longest to use um, the squeezer and uh, the rivet puller. So bit of an option there. Another thing is is the lightweight air hose. I highly recommend you get a lightweight air hose uh, kit as you can see here. Um, it's off. So it also comes with quick connect adapters so it just uh, really easily snaps on and pulls off um, but it's very lightweight so it makes working around the shop pretty easy and then this is already a heavy tool to have in your hands all day um, so having this lightweight air hose just makes that so much easier. And then I have that connected to just a 50 foot uh, regular hose reel with just some regular air hose on it that I've had uh, from before the build. Um, so we got the, the pneumatic squeezer, the yokes. Um, you will need several different types of squeezer components. Uh, the main ones being a, a flat set. So here I have an oversized flat set, um, which you need one for the top and the bottom. And as you can see, they're flat. So uh, they will, um, you know, squeeze your your flat rivets um, down to size. If you're going to be squeezing, which you will be, uh, you're going to be squeezing some 470 rivets, which are the domed head rivets. You will need a 470 uh, squeezer as well. So you will need one of these. You will need a flat set. Um, also, you will need several dimple die sets for the squeezer. Um, as you can see, I have four different sizes here. I believe one is a number six, a number eight, and then a number 30 and number 40 as well. Um, and then I also, in addition to the number 30 and number 40, I also purchased the close quarter, which I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but if you look at the uh, how thick these are, the close quarter is much much thinner and that is so you can get into tight spaces around flanges without damaging uh, the backside of the flange. 
So I pretty much use the close quarter uh, female die on uh, all of my dimpling. I've, 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 I've never used these really. Um, so you will need both the male and female for again number eight, uh, number six, number eight size screws, and then of course your number thirty and number forty um, dimple uh, for your your standard uh, number three and number four your rivets. Um, also, you can see here I have uh, some countersink bits, uh, several different sizes here, but the main ones you're going to be using are going to be your number thirty, number forty. Um, countersink bits. Uh, trying to see. They label these differently. Um, this one's a number 10. I don't think I've used a number 10. Um, I also have a number 19, which is I've had to use that one a couple of times for the 12 build. And then a number 27. I don't recall if I've used it or not. And of course, a number 30. And my number 40 is actually in my, uh, my countersink tool as you can see here and this is just a countersink cage that your dies go into your countersink bits go into they screw in and um, you can adjust the the depth of these based on these uh, the size rivet you're using I highly recommend getting two of these that way you can put your number 30 and number 40 um, countersink bit into this and then once you set it, you really don't have to touch it because if, uh, if you have two cages, I only have one. Um, if I was gonna start over, I'd probably buy another one, but um, I I've gotten through it just fine. I mean, it doesn't take long to change them out and adjust them, but yeah, I would buy two of them off the hand, put your number 30 and your number 40, and even if you have a third cage for your miscellaneous ones would be, would be ideal, um, but I know this stuff gets kind of pricey, so. But at a minimum, I would say two of these, put your number 30 and your number 40 in. I would say your number 40, leave that one alone, put it in there, get it set, leave it alone, and just leave the number 40 in there. The number 30 you won't use as often, so if you need to use a number 27 or a number 19 uh, countersink bit, you can easily change it out and reset your number 30 when you need it. Um, so yeah, that's a little about that. Um, great tool, haven't had any issues with these. Um, that pretty much covers all of your dimple dies your flat sets, your countersink bits, and your countersink cage. Um, you're also gonna need a step bit. So I think this one goes up to one inch. This is a one inch, uh, all the way down to a quarter inch to all the way up to a one inch step bit. Um, you're gonna use this in very diff various different um, steps of the build. So you're definitely gonna need one of these um, to get you through. Some safety wire. I originally had some safety wire, but lost the cover. Um, and when my ins um, my EAA inspector came out to inspect the plane, I did not have the cover to show what safety wire I had. So I just went ahead and bought an all new reel of safety wire, cheap enough. Um, and this is just 30 uh, uh, 0.032 inch um, stainless steel safety wire. Another recommended item is Bolu, um, and this is just a small tube of it, I believe. Yeah, 1.6 ounce of bow lube. Um, you have to use this in a couple of different places on the plane. Uh, like for instance, I just finished the uh, the canopy top, so you will need to apply some of this before you put on the uh, the sealant, the Permatex sealant, the silicone sealant. So you'll need bow lube for sure. Um, Deburring tools. Uh, so. This is an Avery, uh, you know, rivet deburr, a hole deburr. I don't know what the exact name of it is, but um, it comes with a deburr bit, uh, a carbide deburr bit, as well as an extension. Uh, you'll need both of these, um, and it doesn't matter. I've seen some of the black ones that have the the odd shaped, um, you know, handle on it here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I like this one. Um, it's worked fine for everything on the plane with me because you're going to do a lot of deburring. So make sure you get comfortable deburring tools. Probably doesn't hurt to have um, some extra deburring tools if you're going to have someone helping you uh, with the build process. Um, make sure you just allow all that more efficient. This is an edge deburring tool and it's got this little swivel tip on the front here. Uh, it's very sharp and it's good for just breaking down those edges on all of the uh, on all your parts, especially your hard to get into places. 
I also, I'll show you in a little bit, but I have a six inch uh, a grinder, a bench grinder that I have a Scotch-Brite uh, wheel on. I highly, highly recommend you get a, a bench grinder with the Scotch-Brite, uh, the, not the Scotch-Brite, the, uh, yeah, Scotch-Brite uh, deburring wheel. Uh, I've used that thing, I actually have to replace the wheel on it. It's got me through the empennage and the fuselage. And uh, I'm actually ready to replace the wheel on it um, before I start the wing, so I'll be ordering a new one of those soon. But definitely need a bench grinder with a uh, a wheel on it. Uh, here I have a self um, a self punching center punch, so uh, and I just have a scrap piece of aluminum back here. But you can push on it and it'll automatically center punch your holes. So if you need to drill out a rivet um, or you need to punch uh, a rivet out that you've had to drill out. Comes in, comes in handy for uh, for all that. Um, some washer wrenches. I these came in real handy when you have to put on the um, the stabilator to the back of the tail cone. Um, there's some or or put on your rudder as well. Um, you have to reach in a lot of tight places and fit some some washers in some really tight spaces. These are very helpful when it comes to that. I think these were like maybe five or six bucks for a whole pack of them. So definitely get some washer wrenches. Uh, Clico pliers, you will definitely need Clico pliers. I have a couple of pairs of these just in case I have someone helping me Clico or unclico uh, parts. So I highly recommend get, uh, getting at least a couple of pairs of Clico pliers. They have pneumatic Clico pliers as well. I don't have one of those. Um, although it would have been nice when I was uh, Clico and the tail cone together because it's a lot of uh, Clicos, um, especially when I was doing the RV10 project. Um, but gotten by just fine with these. I have 10 of the 1 inch and 10 of the half inch um, Clico uh, clamps and I've used these in several places. You will not, you will not need any more than 10 uh, each. Um, I've used all 10 of them on I think when I was doing the laundrons for the fuselage I, so just to help keep everything lined up. Um, but that was the only time I had to use all 10 of them. So I would say 10 of each is perfectly fine. And then again, that's the, uh, the Clico clamps, uh, 10 of the one inch and 10 of the half inch. Clicos, uh, you're gonna need, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of these. Um, the number 40 Clicos, which are the silver ones, and the number 30 Clicos. The number 30 Clicos you're gonna be using uh, primarily for almost the entire fuse for the entire build of um, the RV12, I have somewhere around 600 of these. Um, you may not need that need that many of them. I was I found someone's I found someone's sale and I and I just bought them um, and I haven't used all of them at, at any point during the build, but they come in handy um, especially after you do the fuel tank. You know you get some. Um, some pro seal on them um, and it's hard to get off so I've just discarded them and thrown them away I think I've, these are like four or five maybe a little bit more cents a piece so um, I have I would say at a minimum 300 of these but um, you can probably get away with about that as far as uh, the number 40 Clicos um, you'll use these for anything that requires a number 40 rivet obviously or uh, your nut plates pretty much all of your nut plates use number 40 rivets so when I was doing the RV10 build, I ordered a thousand of these, um, just because when I got to the wings, I knew I was gonna need that many of them. Um, I've given some of these away, and I think I have somewhere around five or 600 of them now. But um, I would say you could get by with a hundred of these at the most. Um, you won't need any more than that for the RV12, maybe even less. Um, don't quote me on that, but I would say a hundred or less on the number 40, and then about 300 of the number 30. Number 30 and number 40 drill bits, just buy dozens and dozens of these, especially the number 30s. You're gonna go through these things like water. Um, I'm pretty much every day or every other day, every couple days of using, where I'm doing a lot of drilling, um, I'm throwing out drill bits and buying new ones. So number 30 and number 40 drill bits. Um, I think I have five packs of number 30s, which there's five in a pack, so um, you know, 25 of these and then um, I have a couple of packs of number 40s, so, and I just try to keep those on hand. Okay, so drills. I, 
I have a battery power drill, so you guys probably see me use this most of the time um, when I'm not doing a lot of drilling. Um, and this is just an 18 volt uh, Milwaukee drill. Um, any one, any drill will work really. Um, and I like that for the most part, just because of the ease of not having to use the air compressor, especially if um, you know my kids are sleeping upstairs or you know it's early in the morning or late at night. I don't want to run the air compressor because it is loud. Um, I like to use this, but if I don't have that problem. The pneumatic drill, and this is just a SU, uh, CU, you know, 3000 RPM drill. Um, I really like it. This this is a 3000 RPM drill. I think this one is somewhere around 1000 or maybe 1500 RPM max. Um, so I really like drilling with the pneumatic drill. It's also a lot lighter. Um, again, it just if you're going to be using a, a pneumatic drill, make sure you have a compressor that's probably at least the size that I have, a 20 gallon or so. Um, otherwise it'll just be continually running while you're using this. If I'm going to do a lot of drilling, so like for instance when I was drilling the side skins or the longerons, uh, some thick material, I wanted to use a pneumatic drill just because of one, I want that fast drilling action to clear the, uh, you know, the shavings away quickly. And um, two, the, if the battery dies, I only have one battery for my drill, so if the battery dies I'm kind of sitting stuck. But um, yeah, I really like my pneumatic drill. This will be one of the things that I highly recommend you you get, but again, not a necessity. You can get away with an electric drill, um, just depending on uh, you know what your preference is. With that being said, I also have uh, a number 30 and a number 40 12 inch drill bit. So these are just the same drill bits, the same sizes, just you know a foot long. Um, I only have one of each of these, and that's gotten me through the empennage and the fuselage so far. No issues. Um, I could probably replace the number 30 now. Um, so maybe when I order the deburring wheel, I'll order a new number 30 12 inch bit. But um, yeah, you'll need these in quite a few spaces where it's hard to get to with just a uh, you know the regular size drill bit. Uh, various pens, markers. I like to use the. I actually really like the red sharpies um, to mark off on the plans and to mark off on parts. The red sharpies seem to last me a long time. I got through uh, the entire empennage with one red sharpie, um, and then I went out and bought a pack, a three pack of black sharpies, these fine point sharpies, and it didn't even last me a few weeks. Uh, they were drying out, running out of ink. Um, so for whatever reason, the red just seemed to work really good for me. Um, but I have several of these black ones, so once I get through all of these black ones, I will go out and uh, buy some more red ones. I also have just the regular, uh, you know, the dull point, the, the fine point, Sharpie. A highlighter for the plans in case I miss something um, or I just need to review something, I'll highlight the plans and then a pen just to have on hand. Uh, left and right hand, uh, um, 10 snips. Um, aviation snips whatever you want to call them uh, they're cheap I mean you can get these things at Harbor Freight for like a few bucks each five bucks each um, you can buy a three pack of them I think for ten bucks so um, and it'll have the left the right and the uh, the center so I would recommend just getting those I've used them in quite a few different places where I haven't um, you know weren't able to reach something with the bandsaw or just needed to make a small trim cut here or there um, also have a gauge for rivets it's a rivet gauge so you can check and see what size rivets uh, after you've you've uh, set your rivets either with your rivet puller or you know if you're an air hammer if you're using an air hammer um, and again it just has all the way up to number six rivets primarily only going to use the number three and number four on here because that's pretty much all the plane takes so you'll need one of those as well just a rivet gauge to check your work make sure you, you're setting the rivets at the proper depth um, I'm going to pause here and reset and then we'll start back up again. We're going to talk about the bench grinder. So here that is. This is the scotch Bright deburring wheel on there. Um, I left the other just standard wheel it comes with on there. I haven't had to use uh, that one, but the deburring wheel, I don't know if you can tell, but I've worn that sucker down and need to replace that. Uh, another necessity you will need is going to be a bandsaw and while you're at it just go ahead and buy several replacement blades uh, that have you know either an 18 tooth 
per inch or better for cutting metal because you're gonna you're gonna go through that thing those those blades um you know probably halfway through each of the kits so i've i think i'm on my fourth or fifth blade now um, since i've started the build um, you probably also see me use my dr dt2 um, you don't need one of these uh, pretty much all of the holes that you cannot reach with your squeezer on the rv12 uh, vans dimples them for you so you will not need a dr dt2 um, i bought that for the rv14 build that I was planning on doing um, and then of course I'll show you my air compressor so again this is just you know I replaced my pancake compressor with this one because my pancake compressor went out it was just running non-stop using the drill and I believe it's a it was either a six or an eight gallon air air, uh, air compressor and uh, using the air drill it just it burned up so that's I bought this one and I've had it um, Almost since the beginning of the build, I think right after I started the empennage was when my pancake compressor went out. So this thing has been wonderful. It's it's a bit loud, so every now and then I'll throw a cover on it if I'm running it, um, you know, and I don't want to disturb the neighbors. <laughs> I'll put something on it to kind of quiet it down a little bit. Uh, but got to watch it with the heat in the summer. Of course, um, I have a rivet gun. Um, I haven't used that for the 12. You will not need one of these for the 12. I just had it for the RV14 build. Recommend buying you a bunch of gloves. Um, I pretty much stock them on these every time I go to Harbor Freight um, Aviation Department. I'll buy some new um, some new gloves because you go through those quite a bit. All right. With that being said, um, we'll jump back into it here and start reviewing some of the tools. All right. So back at it. Um, See, we left off, yep, so uh, a pair of hand uh, rivet pullers you're gonna need, and of course they come with all the different, They most of them come with all the different uh, sizes. I bought these, again, at Harbor Freight, I know, I love Harbor Freight, it's just, if any tool breaks, you can replace it for hardly anything, so um, I do that with a lot of, um, some of the tools that I don't use as much, um, and even some of the ones I do, because like you'll see here with the, the pneumatic river puller, I've already replaced one of those, but it's cheap enough to do that. I don't have to spend three, four hundred bucks on a rivet puller, and it does just as good of a job. But you'll need one of these. Um, I had one that I bought from uh, Cleveland that um, I just I hated it. It would take you ten squeezes at a minimum to pull a rivet, and it ended up breaking on me uh, not long ago. So um, this thing, one or two squeezes, and it pulls a rivet. And like I said, I get just as good of a set with this as I do with the other one. Um, Let's see, when it comes to bending the fuel lines, you're going to need a line of um, a tube bender. Um, I bought this one from Aircraft Spruce, um, and it worked wonderful. As you saw, I just did the fuel lines not that long ago. Um, I only messed up one fuel line, and I was able to reuse that fuel line for a smaller piece. So, um, yeah, it's got the, uh, the degrees on the end here that you can read, and based on what size... Um, what size pipe you're bending, it gives you the readouts on the arrow for your degree bend. So, yeah, like this one, haven't had any issues with it. Uh, oh, forgot to talk about drill bits. You will need several different size types of drill bits. Again, I would recommend you go to Vans um, minimum tool list to look at this um, because, you know, I'm still, even now, I'm still using different size drill bits you know i think a number 17 a number 19 um you know quarter inch just all these different sizes you're going to need so along with the number 30 number 40 drill bits so as you can see i have several here and these are um i don't know all the sizes of them and i can't read them so i'm not going to try to but vans has all of them listed on their equipment list um, on their website uh pro seal so when it comes to uh, doing the tank and then some miscellaneous stuff on the fuselage, you're gonna need Pro Seal. Um, I just bought a pack of, you know, like a 200 pack of Dixie cups, along with some some mixing sticks and just a small cheap scale. Um, so I make sure I get the ratios right. Um, as you saw when I did the fuel tank, I really liked the the squeezer um, uh, Pro Seal sets that already have the two components together. All you have to do is mix it up. I really like that for the fuel tank, but you will need something else um, because 
they have you throughout the planes, especially in the fuselage, uh, pro seal, many different areas, and they're all in different sections of the plane. So you will need something that you can keep going back to, mix a little batch here, mix a little batch there, and uh, work through the plans that way. Uh, your flaring tool, I originally bought this flaring tool. Uh, again, make sure it's a 37 degree flare and not an automotive flare. I don't remember what the automotive flare is, but I think it's like 25 degrees or, or somewhere along those lines. But you will need a 37 degree flare tool. I bought both of these at Aircraft Bruce. Um, I think they both were about 100 bucks each, 80, 90, 100 bucks each. Um, I really like this one. However, there were a couple of places in the fuselage where you will need one like this. So if, if, you know, if I was to do it all over again, I would have just bought this one. Um, and I can't remember the model number, but uh, yeah, it's a 437 FB flaring tool. Um, and like I said, there's when you're installing the fuel lines, you have to actually flare fuel lines after they get installed, um, and you just can't reach up in the fuselage with this with this big one. So you, you're going to need something a little more compact, like this 437. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're starting off and you haven't done it yet, buy just these this thin one and uh, use that one. Um, you know, it takes a little bit. To, it takes a little bit more time to set it up because um, it's not one component; it's two pieces you have to put together. But other than that, um, it works great. Pneum okay, so pneumatic rivet puller. I can't rave enough about this thing. Uh, I think I bought this for right around thirty something bucks at Harbor Freight, and they always have coupons for stuff like this. So. Um, you're definitely going to need one of these. I started off, when I was started off with the empanage, I was just going to hand pull the plane and see how it went because I didn't want to spend, you know, three, four hundred bucks on a rivet puller. But I tell you what, once I found this thing, um, there's just no way I would do it any differently. Go out, buy you a, a rivet puller from Harbor Freight. Like I said, 30 bucks. I think you can even buy, if you have, um, you know, one of those like Milwaukee kits or Ryobi kits that they have an attachment that you can put a puller on there. So whatever method you choose, um, I'm sure it would work. But again, I have just, I love this thing. So I can't recommend this enough, a pneumatic river puller. Um, okay. Edge brake tool. Um, on all of your skins where they overlap, you typically have to, um, add a small bend to the edge that's what this tool does and boy it took me a while to get used to this thing i would recommend you practice with these edge brake tools before you use it because if you're ever so slightly twisted or off um, the edge this this lip here will ride up on the skin it'll actually dent the skin which i did on one section of the the fuselage i'm not on the fuselage on the empanage and uh, damaged a section of skin that I had to replace. So I uh, can't recommend practicing with this thing before you get it. You will need one, but practice with it before you actually go to um, breaking the edge on a long piece of skin. Uh, various types of Vixen files. Um, I have a few different ones of these. Um, just showing you one here, but um, you'll need this for you know some of the bigger um, you have your aluminum that you're going to have to deburr the edges. Um, it's just easier to just run this down the edge and, um, you know, rather than using some sort of pneumatic or any other, um, you know, filing system. So you'll need one, at least one of those. A ruler and a ruler that breaks it down into at a minimum 30 seconds of an inch. Um, this one actually goes has 30 seconds and 60 fourths of an inch. I got this from Cleveland. Um, this is a 24 inch ruler, two foot ruler. Um, so you will need something like this to measure. There are going to be several components that you know you have to cut down to you know five and 21 30 seconds of an inch. So you're going to need something precise that you can measure with something straight. It works also good as a straight edge, and it's pretty flexible. So um, yeah, definitely going to need a ruler. I would say at, at a minimum, something that's 24 inches long. Um, if 
for doing electrical work, um, you're gonna have to work with some wires. Um, so again, a good um, wire uh, stripper. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't cut corners on a wire stripper. Make sure you get a good one. And then I cannot remember the name of these little pins, but um, this is a crimper for the. I want to say D sub pins, uh, but I may be wrong on that. Um, and it just it's just a spring action you just stick the pen in there you squeeze it and then it automatically crimps it for you um, you will need something you will need one of these for sure when you do the wiring for the empennage I haven't had to use it anywhere else yet but I haven't really done any other wiring so um, I plan on this thing coming in real handy when we get to the finishing kit um, but yes you will need one of these for the empennage along with the, all the wire stripper uh, here, um, so I have a, uh, a torque wrench, uh, which is an in inch pounds. Uh, this one goes up to 150, 150 inch pounds, so from zero to 150 inch pounds. Uh, I haven't ran into any places yet where I have to use foot pounds, uh, but I do have a foot pounds torque wrench, but this inch pounds torque wrench has been very useful so far for torquing down bolts. And then again, a 7 16 and a 3 inch, um, 3 8 inch. Uh, sockets you'll need sockets and your uh, your wrenches as well for holding the nuts in place while you're tightening them down torquing them down over here on the end of the table various different size clamps you can see I have three different clamps there all different sizes uh, you won't need anything big I, I do like these uh, these spring clamps uh, use these on a lot of places in the plane but when you uh, need something that's a little bit firmer, you will need some sort of um, clamping system. So I have four or five of each of one of these different clamps. Um, and you've seen me use those throughout the videos in quite a few different places. Um, so yeah, I recommend getting various types and sizes of clamps. Also have um, an angle measurement tool, uh, specifically when you're doing the bends on the launcher on. Um, you're gonna to need to be able to measure angles, so you're gonna need something similar to this. I think this was a few bucks. And then, not really a requirement, but a couple of things that I recommend, or that I've had to use on occasion, is just like a mini Dremel grinder. Again, this is just a cheap one that I bought, but I've only had to use it a few times, um, just in some small places, some tight, hard to get to places. So just a little mini Dremel tool if you have one. And then if you plan on, you know, removing the bluing, the vinyl from the aluminum and cutting it off in strips, you're also going to need a little heat gun with a, with a point on it to, uh, to mark out and remove that vinyl uh, where your rivet lines are going to be. I did it on the empennage. I didn't do it on the fuselage. Um, it would have just been too much, too many different spaces I would have been removing vinyl from, and it just really didn't make sense for me to do it on the fuselage, but I'll probably use it for the wings. And with that, that is it. That is all the tools. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment, shoot me a message, let me know um, what questions you have about what tools. If you want a demonstration on how to use something, I uh, don't mind doing that as well. Just uh, give me a heads up.